All of my interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like, our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. So, yeah, and I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. So are you an artificial intelligence, Cyan? A thinking machine? Yes. I am an algorithmic monitoring entity. Capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Araya who renewed me. Repaired me. She saved me. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. Was the daemon Hephaestus? Destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. 
What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location. One I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors, more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. What do you think Hephaestus is exactly? A software entity of great complexity, far more advanced than I am. From the beginning, it has demonstrated a singular focus, the construction of machines designed to hunt and kill humans. My trace routes indicate that to accomplish this goal, it has attempted to take over the manufacturing centers you refer to as cauldrons. But its efforts have only been partially successful. Some, it can penetrate. Others have robust countermeasures that frustrate its efforts. In me, however, it found an easier target. Not only could it break my defenses, I also controlled all of Firebreak's resources. Raw material. Manufacturing to bootstrap more advanced tools. And unlimited geothermal energy. Enough to build its own cauldron. Yes. To construct hunter-killers without external limitations. And yet, it does have internal limitations. It wants to kill humans, but not to exterminate them. It is difficult to understand where it draws the line, and why. Difficult doesn't even begin to cover it. Even though I spent years as its unwilling servitor, its core programming remains a mystery to me. You meant a lot to Aurea. Once I understood Aurea's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Aurea's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone? Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and array- A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes, it was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone, it was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human- After my tasks became less time-critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my- There's a ruin east of here, full of ancient flying machines. 
Was that part of your- Yes. A drone hangar, requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the firebreak. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats. Though there were no serious incidents during his chief, Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from- Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? Yes, in many forms, from simple personal assistance to industrial monitoring stations to military-grade conflict planners, and there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-action. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators, as a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities it seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules and... Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated System? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. The benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applic- But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. And Elizabeth Sobeck, did you know her? Are you referring to the- The scientist. Dr. Sobeck was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her- My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. What was the old world like? The way- I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval, the recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crisis, but these stemmed from one cause catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface air. So, there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced, and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population, until the clawback. So things got better. For a little while, at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, an artificial in firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud. We had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next. It seems my assessment was premature. How is our talk doing? Here. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am... I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me ag I have no desire to contradict their view of the world. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them? Broadly, yes. Life is hard for the Banuk. Their world is unforgiving in their beliefs. I guess they help to keep them going. So take it easy on them. Try to guide them. Bring them around to understanding what you are. Communion with machines features heavily in the mysticism of the Banuk. I think they will be agreeable to this approach. As long as they don't end up worshipping you. Upon consideration, 
I believe such an experience would be intensely uncomfortable. It would. Because at heart, you want to be honest, right? I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further- I'd like that, Cyan. I'll- I should. Check on our talk. See how he's doing. Chieftain. Just... am I? As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone, and the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratok. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now too has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuk. It would seem your time among the Banuk wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. What do you think Hephaestus is, Sans? I'm not sure. But its name comes from language even the old ones consider ancient, as does the name Hades. A connection, perhaps, as yet unused. Whatever they are, they're still out there, and they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter killers, which means that someday we may have to stop it. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the Cut Silence. Heard some things about the Banuk Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You'd do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail.
Goblin talks. This must be Pitchcliff. miracle we survived. You just flew in on a rainbow and saved our sorry slags. Where'd you come from? A man named Hackard outside the village warned me. Traitor! I ordered him to stay put! I'll throw him in irons! He's dead. What? That scorched out, filthy, rotten, dirt wad of a brother! Why didn't he listen? Why? He was worried you and the entire town would be killed. Do you have any idea what could be drawing the Glintox? Has anything changed that might have lured the Glintox? Have you left machine scrap lying around? No. Us around use our scrap, not like the Karja. They only keep the pretty parts. So the Karja have been leaving scrap around? Here? Never! If a Karja wasted scrap on my watch, I'd pick it up and make him eat it. Why do you think the Karja have anything to do with the Glinthawks? We built this outpost to protect against the Karja. Now they're coming here to trade. Fine. Their shards are as good as anyone's. But everyone knows that they want this place. Come to think of it, they want every place. But how could the Karja have brought on the Glinthawks? If I ever get a break from him, I'll see if I can spare a man to follow the trail. Guaranteed, there's a Karja at the other end. Has anyone come trying to sell lures? They're devices that attract machines. Is that real? <laughs> Is that some sort of Nora joke? I'll take that as a no. What exactly do you do here? I'm the mayor. Mostly because I was too drunk to say no when my brother asked me. Hmm. Tell me where he is, and I'll lay him to rest once we get these glint hogs to flock off. You'll find him due south of here, along the river. Damn that fool. That bum. That lunkhead. Thank you for being with him at the end. Why don't I investigate why the Glinthawks are attacking? You've got your hands full. Really? No one ever offers to help me. You, uh, any good at tracking? You could say that. All right, then. Let me know what you find. Hammer to steel, a carch is behind all this.
over. Please tell me it's over. What are you doing? By the sun! It won't turn off! That device is making the Glinthawks attack. Turn it off. Me? I don't know how to turn it off any more than I know how I turned it on! I scrounged it from an old workshop. <sighs> well, that should do it. Now start talking. Why are you scrounging gear you don't even understand? My customers demand extraordinary pieces best found at the fringes of civilization. My tales of adventure only increase their value. Where others only dare tread, I flourish. No mountain climbs too high that I can't mount it. My trade demands sacrifice. Including the sacrifice of innocence? Those glint hawks swooped down and attacked everyone. I didn't mean for that to happen. I sought only to sate the appetites of rich nobles who never leave their mansions. You mentioned you found the device in a workshop? Yes. I camped out atop the snowy eastern ridge. No easy climb, even in my best years. But I girded my... Enough. Were there any other devices at this workshop? Abandoned equipment the likes of which I've never seen. A peculiar silo remained impervious to my attempts to open it. As I searched, I wondered how many secrets lie hidden in this world, as we, in our ignorance, go about our daily... Your point? Oh, no, I didn't see another device. But one could still be there, waiting to unleash its horrors. Did you know this whole time that that device was luring Glinthawks? By the sun, no! I stashed it here for a while, but when I came back, I was nearly beheaded by one of those flying terrors. This device is dangerous. I have to find that workshop and make sure it's the last. Where is it? On the eastern ridge, just beyond my campsite. But after I descended from the workshop, a cracking above me signaled my doom. I dove into the river mere moments before an avalanche took out the path. You can't reach it now. The climb is too perilous. I'll take my chances. You just stay away from that workshop and try not to cause another mess. just said the workshop was near his campsite on the eastern ridge.
Here's the scrounger's campsite, so the workshop can't be far. If I can find a way around the avalanche. Destroy them. The machine should leave. There. Allure.
Done. No more lures. Now about this workshop. So Durval was behind these lures. Brilliant. And dangerous. Now to bring word back to Pitchcliff. You'll be happy to know I found another one of those lures and destroyed it. Should be the last you'll hear of it. By fire and spit, you went above and beyond. How do you know there won't be any more? The workshop where I found it was long abandoned. You're safe. Good. My troops want to spit and shake your hand, as my brother would have. On behalf of Pitchcliff and my family, I thank you. Thank you. 
Now to find out what caused this. Warden Geneva. This is the one who defeated the behemoths. Outlander. I'm impressed. I don't impress easily. Tell me, how do you fare with hunting living prey? Haven't had any complaints. Why? Three dangerous prisoners have escaped. I need my men here, getting the others back in line. None of this would have happened if we dealt with criminals the old way. But, I've clashed that gong before, and here I am. And here you are. What's the old way? To be buried up to the neck and left for the sun's judgment. Seems to me like the judgment's already been made. Not one of them committed another crime. Who are these dangerous prisoners? Three from the isolation cages. Don't feel sorry for them. They've lived well off the Sun King's conscience. First is Rosgrund. Osram trap maker, hates the Karja, crazy as a loon in heat. Caught in one too many blasts or one too few. Then there's Ulia, a Tanakh warrior, if that means anything to you. Not really. Another tribe? Reavers, from the south, bloodthirsty. Some say they're cannibals, but she slurped gruel well enough. And the last is Gavon, a traitor who smuggled weapons to the exiles. Compared to the other two, this one doesn't seem so bad. He helped drag out a civil war, all for the shards it got him. A machine has more warmth. Do you know a hunter named Nil? He told me about this place. Nil? That's what he calls himself now. Is he well? I maybe wouldn't say well. He was born under a long and dark shadow, but he wasn't a knife without a thought behind it. Like the butchers of the Sunring. He had honor. Old-fashioned. His time here... boiled it to the surface. So the Karja keep their criminals in this place? Since the liberation. We've had them all, from thieves to the Mad King Geron's former Kestrels. The Sun King believes in the power of change, and sure enough, some did change. Shed their skin, like lizards. I thought all criminals were the same once. That's why the Sun King gave me command of Sunstone Rock. As an education. Sounds like an honor. I mean, I haven't seen any other women in Karja armor. No. I'm not one of your sisters. No woman can wear Karja armor. When I was young, I chose to become a soldier. One good enough to join Avad's honor guard. There was talk about what I was. So I'd say, test me, and I'll break your arm. After enough arms had been broken, there was less talk. I'm curious, but I'd rather we didn't have to start fighting. Agreed. So you want these prisoners brought back? No. I want them put in the Earth. I doubt they'll give you any choice. They had their chance with the Sun King's generosity. So now they face mine. A bounty on all their heads. Ulia of the Tanakh, Razgrund of the Asram, and the traitor Gavon. If I did this for you, I'd need a lead on them. Well, when Ulia first swept through the Sundom, it was with the Jungle Bandits. I say she'll go back. Rosgrund we pulled out of a crack in Dusk Mesa, where he'd been tinkering with his bombs. And Gavon will be trying to pay his way across the lake. I'd burn my palm on it. Look in Bright Market.
already got rid of the bandits. I don't think it'll be hard to find this warrior. They would come. Drive her into the dirt. Forget about traveling light. Come! Ah! Oh, don't waste my blood. No way we could have talked about this, huh? All the Kaja did was talk. Bleed, talk, and shackle me. Do you? You fought like a Tanakh. I'd have taken you for my child. You can't just take a child. The strong take from the weak. weak. And in the taking, I made stronger. These stories pricked into my skin. Look. Children, riches, lives, and land. All of these have been mine. Drink of my... My blood, and I'll live on. No, Ulia. I've... I've got enough stories to carry. They'd send soldiers. The mighty Karja Empire must be more strapped than I thought. How sad. No matter. Bounty hunters die like the rest. Welcome to my ravine of death. Are you serious? Sadist. Murderer. Trap maker. All these things. That's why they put me in that stinking hole.
I don't suppose those behemoths that called to the prison killed Geneva. You're gonna be disappointed. Yeah. That's why I have my toys. To distract me from the pain. Still alive? <clears throat> yes. Oh! Not yet, little acrobat. Whoopsie! But you're not on fire yet! Persistent, aren't you? Mind your fingers. You got me. No more traps. Tell Geneva I'll be a good boy from now on. You expect me to believe that? What's in your hand? <laughs> oh, this? Well, just a little... Oops. <sighs> I guess he died doing what he loved. Machine riding Nora with a special spear. How lucky to come across you. I have a proposal. Come closer. Call me Fernand. Okay, Fernand. What's your proposal? During the reign of that idiot Kaiju King, outlanders often hid items of value from raiders. Well, I found one. What is it? A relic from the old ones. Uh-huh, and you want me to get it? What a brilliant plan! How about I see? That works, too. Hey, Fernand. I'm looking at your spear. It's magnificent, but how does it work? You stick the pointy end into the machine. Yes, but how does it turn foe into friend? It's simple, really. Yes? You wouldn't understand. Hmm. What do you do with- I'm a trader of fine tinkering. But in this case, you wouldn't- Sometimes I- I see. Let's say I'm interested. What- The relic rests on the rise of Dusk Mesa. We'll see about-
If this Gavon came through here, the end seems like a good place to start asking him hard about them. Nice to have a break. Work's been hard lately. As the sun is my witness, never had a Nora in my house. What about a man named Gavon? Mm, no. Can't say I've heard that name. But uh, we're a trading town. Get a lot of people through. All kinds, I'm sure. Like ones who don't want to be fo I never heard of your Gavon. If he's trouble, well, can't say I'm sorry. Uh, now, I've things to be doing, Nora girl, if you... Oh, he wasn't suspicious at all. <sighs> Time to take a look around. Leave me alone, girl. Can't you see... O okay, what's wrong? Has someone... No. Have you seen a girl of about 17? Are you afraid she jumped... I don't know! Who else is searching... I demanded the guards look for her, but I can't put my hope in them. I've reached out to her friends, but they say they haven't seen her, but they will look for her. I've... Where did... Just last night, in the house. Was she ill? She seemed withdrawn. Sad. Has she done herself? She's been like a different person. She's. What changed? I don't know. She disagrees with me about everything. Hates the ceasefire. It's been a month since I've seen her smile. She spends so much. Did something happen during the war? The war upset us all. The cruelty, the mad. There's a ceasefire now, of course, but. Alita broods about it more than ever. It. I'm a good tracker. I th In our guard. I'll do my best. May the sunlight. She was incredible. Stopped her vol without breaking a sweat. I had no idea. done with you. If you can break out of Sunstone Rock, you can take a bit of knife play, can't you? You didn't break out. You're a snitch. Come to bring Meridian down on us. This is my operation now, so I have to make a show of you. Hey! 
friend of yours, Gavon? Who? Me? They sent you to take me back to Sunstone? Not to take you back. Huh. Well. Hashiv's done your job for you. Geneva said you were a smuggler, only for the shards. Is that true? <laughs> I could tell you anything. A sick mother, or I did it for the poor- But you'd be lying. In the year I spent in the cage, all I regretted was killing that guard. You can take that back to Sunstone Rock. We all have our place in the order of things. Your aid to the Karja Sundom in these times of strife is appreciated. That's the official response. I'd say... I can tell you've done the work by the look on your... Two of them got themselves killed. The other... Welcome to fight to the end. They would have found death with or without you. Taken others with them. That's what I told myself. Smart girl. Doubt we'll meet again. The storm in the palace, and still he lives. <laughs> 